Hey everybody, Prow here. Welcome to another episode or tutorial from Bedrock in Minecraft. And you can see that today I got a slime block in my hand because we are going to be working on a slime farm. And I do have a little help today from one of my friends and Diamond Level patrons, Top Dog. Everybody say hello to Top Dog. Awesome, cool. So Top Dog's going to be helping us out today because we got a lot of work to do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut over to explaining the perimeter of this thing first and what this crazy thing above us is, and then we'll dive down into the pit. So before you get started to select your area, you need to know what area to select. So um, I selected a very specific area um, for my slime chunks, which uh, you'll see in the upcoming segment. But um, what you need to do is just go to Google and search for Slime Finder PE. Um, I do believe that uh, Chunk Base works fine as well, but I don't know, Slime Finder is the first one I use. So that's the one that I use now whenever I am looking for Slime Chunks. So I'll just go to their website quite simply. And here it is. Pretty simple, right? So um, I can scroll around and find Slime Chunks. Let's say I have a base at... Uh, 1250 and negative 420 and I want to know what kind of slime chunks I didn't do negative negative 420 there we go so let's say I have a base there and I'm looking for slime chunks around there it took me to directly to that spot I can go and hover over the slime chunk and it'll tell me the chunk um, coordinates uh, from one corner to the other that way I can mark it out so find a slime chunk or slime chunks that you want to do um, you'll see the rates at which one slime chunk can work at the end, and then make your decision on if you just want to do one or more. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and cut in back into the video. All right, so first we're going to go over this grid up here. But first, I have a second uh, one of my diamond members joining me, Rowdy. Everybody say hi to Rowdy. What is up? Appreciate the help. Um, so I definitely appreciate these guys helping me out. Like if you've ever done one of these, it's a lot of work, and trying to do one in a kind of quick fashion for a tutorial is um, it's even more work to have to go through and do it all in a short period of time so love those guys for helping me out and I do thank them very much and um, anyways so I just want to show you guys the grid here really quick so if you see the coordinates uh, coordinates I'm at 484 761 um, these green and blue squares are actually all slime chunks I did a lot of searching one night me and Rowdy did for um, the best group of slime chunks that we could find and this just happened to be it so um, I'm only gonna be setting up one here for you guys right now which is gonna be here but um, you can use all four of these and get a ridiculous amount of slime um, so you guys will get to see at the end of the video how good one slime chunk does so six of them won't quite be six times faster because they're all using the same mob cap but it will be faster than doing just one um, now this red here is how far out we have to spawn proof for this thing to fully effectively work okay so anything within this square goes against our mob cap there is a surface cap of eight mobs and a cave cap of eight mobs what that means is is let's say I have five monsters out here in this area then only three slimes would be able to spawn that's gonna kill our efficiency and then at nighttime you'll probably get eight mobs out here therefore you'll have none in here also you'll have things like drowned and other you know creepers that don't despawn and skeletons that have helmets that don't you know get killed by the sunlight and all that stuff that'll take away from your mob cap so you can't just dig a hole and expect it to work efficiently for long it just doesn't work like that so what you'll have to do is you'll see here I counted out four chunks one two three four and I did that in all directions and I boxed it off so that area is the area we need to spawn proof and as I go down here you'll see that what we're doing is one block outside of this okay so one block outside of this we're fencing all the way around and that fencing is keeping mobs from getting into us so you can see here we got rowdy and we got top dog are going through and uh, getting this thing fenced off that way our mobs don't get in and then we're going to torch this whole thing. We're going to get rid of all the water because we don't want any drown spawning. And then after we're done with all that, and at the very end of the video, um, you guys will get to see this thing as a multi-layer. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go through and spawn proof all of the caves in the area as well. So that way we can have multiple platforms to get our uh, cave spawns. Now this hole in the ground 
is a little bit larger than this chunk, right? So this uh, chunk, if you don't know, is 16 blocks across and 16 blocks across. That's the, the whole game is just comprised of a whole bunch of chunks. So the hole I have here is not 16 by 16, but it's actually 18, or I'm sorry, 20 by 20. So I went two extra chunks in one direction, or two extra blocks in one direction, and two extra blocks in another direction. Um, you're going to need to do that to get the um, the additional, or to get the slimes to be able to jump over to what we're going to be putting here for them to jump over to to die. Um, you don't have to dig it all the way down if you're only going to do surface mobs. You just need the bottom area clear. But if you're not doing surface mobs, or if you're going to be doing cave mobs too, then you'll see why, but you'll have to have you know, practically the whole thing all the way down uh, cleared out. All right, so uh, next we're going to jump into how we get this thing set up. All right, so uh, I set up a floor here. The uh, smooth stone, that is my uh, spawn, or my slime chunk. And then this was the extra area I dug out. And in one of these corners here, not sure which one, it's this one. Um, you'll see I actually dug out below it as well. So we went all the way down to uh, to bedrock. So Y equals 5 is where bedrock starts. And then I put the floor of this thing four blocks higher than that bedrock. Depending on how you do your storage, you might want more or less than that. If you're going to just shoot all of your items like up a water stream or something like that, then this is probably fine. You could probably even go one lower than this. Um, but if you want to keep your storage down here and you want a lot of storage, then you might want to maybe put this one or two blocks higher. It's kind of up to you, uh, but you'll see here when I'm standing on my floor level, I'm at Y equals 9. So on each side here, there's two ways you can do this. Um, you can do a iron golem or a snow golem. I'll show you both really quick. So you see here, oh, here, let me point this out before I forget, um, these torches. Slimes can spawn on torches, so you can light this thing however you want to. It doesn't matter. You can put a torch on every block. They'll still spawn, but you do need it well lit. Because if you once you put a roof over top of this thing or it turns nighttime, you don't want other types of monsters spawning down here. You only want slimes. Slimes will spawn at any light level. Um, so anyways, we're in the center of the farm here. We're going to punch out these four blocks in the center, like so. And we're going to make this thing go too deep into the wall. We're going to trim out these edges like so. Uh, we're going to throw in some fencing like this. Actually, it doesn't need to come that far out. Like this. And then we need some magma blocks. So let me grab those really quick. And then we're going to put magma blocks all through here. Uh, magma blocks are what's going to be killing our slime. So any slime that come over here, we'll get on those. Uh, snow golem will, first of all, snow is easy to get. You don't have to waste any iron. And the snow golems will attract the slimes. The slimes will see them and try to kill them. So it's a quick, easy way to uh, get your slimes over there. And then we need to make sure that no slimes actually get into this thing when they turn from the uh, regular slimes into baby slimes. If you don't put this fence up here, your baby slimes will be able to get in there when the bigger slime dies and they get spawned. They'll jump in there. So do it just like that. And then on the other side here, um, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna show you what to do to make it into an iron golem, but I'm not actually gonna do that for the tutorial because I like the snow golem a lot better. So you actually do the same thing where you do four, but instead of taking it too deep like that, you're actually gonna make it three deep. Let's plug up that hole right there, and then we're actually going to come in two like this. One like this. Two, 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 one, one, one. And then I believe what we gotta do is you gotta come out a little bit further because the iron golem requires a little bit extra space to spawn because the iron golem, I'm sure you guys know, but your iron golem looks like this. And you can't have any blocks below or above him, and he's a little bit bigger, you don't want him to like suffocate in the wall or get hit by the magma blocks. But essentially, you just build this little thing just like I did there, and then you knock out all of these. Oops. Like that. 
and then fill it in just like I did over there. So this way you won't have any slimes that can like don't die. They, they'll they die on those blocks. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and erase that because we're not doing the iron golem. We're doing a snow golem. So let me get this set up really quick and I'll be right back. All right, so before we run down and do the system down there, I just wanted to show you guys really briefly how and why this thing works the way it does. So if I put a slime here on this corner that can spawn on, you'll see he runs right over to this guy and will die. Same here. And then same here. Same here. And if I throw one like right in the center here, he'll pick one of the sides and he'll go there. Cool? So you'll see here some of the slime balls do not fall on these lava blocks. So we're going to put some tracks down there. And they're actually going to travel this whole area in a snake pattern like that. That way they just go over all the blocks. Same on this side. They'll snake across, up, and around like so. So actually we will dive down here right now. And I'll be closing this off with a trap door here in a little bit. Don't worry. Um, so we're going to go down here. It's easy to eyeball where you're putting this because the blocks are right there. So we just need to come out one on each side except the back. So just like this. Perfect. And then actually I'll do that other side in a moment here. We need... Um, That right there, some powered rails, and we can come across like so. And we'll do powered rail here and here, like this. Oops, not quite like that. We'll have to break that first, connect that. Powered rails can definitely be annoying. Let me go across. Let's put you here first. Now let's connect you there. All right, so we got our snake-like pattern there. Now. Uh, when it comes to the storage system for this, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. And everybody, some people have their favorite way and some people don't know what to do. Okay, so I'm really just going to focus on making something that is really, really simple. You don't have to know a lot of redstone and fancy stuff or have a ton of materials to be able to do it. Um, but obviously you can do collection however you want to. You can throw in a item loader and unloader over here and have the cart stop on that and load it all in. Um, you can throw in a few hoppers here and then put everything in like a chest or something on each side. You can um, shoot everything up a water stream up top. So there's a ton of different ways you can do it. Um, you guys will see the way that I'm gonna do it here in a moment. So I'm gonna actually cut away really quick while I build it and then I'll be right back. All right, so I got it all set up here, nice and simple. So I can actually throw this guy on right here and you'll see my mine cart, he'll just go back and forth. Now you do want this area to be open like this. You need to have a maintenance area because one thing with bedrock is these little mine carts, they can, they can just disappear. It doesn't matter if they are chunk aligned or not chunk aligned. I've done both. When you get out of an area, sometimes they can just disappear over time. So being able to just get down here and easily either bump them to get them moving if he stops or to be able to just place a new one would be a good thing for you to be able to do and this setup definitely allows for that um, so you'll see here basically as it goes back and forth he'll pick up some slime balls he'll drive across here these hoppers should pick them all up without any trouble um, if you want to make them a little bit bigger that's fine you can you know add bring these uh, hoppers out each way and add some more chests in if you have the space here and the bedrock's not blocking you or you built this a little bit higher you can have multiple layers of chests so again storage is kind of up to you um, you see I have all the hoppers facing in one direction that way if like one of these fills up this will fill up this will fill up and then it'll go down to this one this way it'll make sure that this chest will probably fill up first this one second this one third this one fourth although they will all kind of gather slime balls in this uh, in this like setup I guess but if you're just doing this for personal like reasons this is this is gonna be more than enough, especially if you throw a crafting table down here, change the slime balls into slime, uh, slime blocks. But yeah, so now this system is done. So what I should be able to do here really quick, let's go ahead and let's change our settings. Let's turn our difficulty up. Let's fly up in the air just a touch here. And you'll see we have slime spawning already. And then these guys will spawn at a decent rate, you know, not too bad, but it's just one platform. So if you clear out multiple slime chunks, then you'll get obviously a lot more because you'll have you know, more of these 
things running. And it looks like the guys are like right above us here. I don't know what they're doing. And um, But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this to another level. So we're actually gonna set up multiple platforms. Um, and I believe they have to be, you need one, two, three, and I think this one could be like a half slab, although I'm a little weary about that because you never know when they could change the game or the spawning mechanics to where they won't spawn on a half slab or the big slime chunk, slime uh, slimes need a little bit more space. So I prefer to just, we'll future proof this thing and we'll put the floor at that level, that level, and then we'll kind of work our way up until the limit that the slimes can spawn at. And I don't remember that limit. I think it's somewhere in like the mid thirties. So we'll bring it up multiple levels. And then, yep, see, still going. Um, and then um, we'll go through, we'll spawn proof every area around here, and then we'll have all these different layers going. And that's why we dug this thing out going up like this, because what will happen is the slimes here, they're going to see, we're going to end up setting up another snow golem for every level. And then the slimes, they'll try to jump over, they'll try to get him, they won't be able to get him, they'll fall down, and they'll fall down to this guy and then try to get him, or they'll die on the way down or something like that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get it set up now. Alright, so uh, first we're going to go up to the top here and we're going to take a look at uh, how much these guys have got. What is this? What is this? <laughs> oh my gosh, I leave these guys here. You know, they, they have a simple task. They're just going to go through light everything and they <laughs> had to set up glowstone with their names. Alright, I guess I can't complain, right? They're helping me out a lot. They're having a little bit of fun, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but that is pretty hilarious all right so as you can see they they're getting wow a lot of lighting we still got a lot of lighting to do so i'm gonna before we get started doing the underside i gotta help them finish this lighting up so we're gonna do that off camera we're gonna half slab this stuff down here off camera i might show you guys a little bit of it once we're done and um then we'll be ready to show this thing off and what it looks like when it's uh, fully operational all right so after a lot of hard work i am back so um, we had one more person join us. We got Jay Solid here. So Jay Solid, Top Dog, and Rue, who I was pronouncing his name wrong. It's not Rowdy. It's Rudy, known as Rue. It says it in his name. My name is Rue. So I guess I should have got that. Uh, so I want to thank those guys out a lot. Um, the surface is pretty easy. So if you're just setting this thing up for surface spawns, it's really not that bad. But to get it set up for cave spawns, man, it's a lot. Um... So anything above Y level 40, technically you can go through and just um, you can just light it. But anything below Y level 40, you kind of need to go and is this thing set on? Yeah, it's set on difficulty. Um, anything below 40, you need to slab because if it's inside of a slime chunk, even if it's lit, it's not going to. Um, it's still going to spawn slimes in it, and they're going to get stuck. So we went through and we did all the cave systems. Um, this thing is spawning mobs now. Um, I just uh, flipped the uh, the difficulty to peaceful and then back on, so it's probably taking a moment for them to kind of get started up. But as you can see, they are spawning in. It's one chunk. All of the layers below are working as well. It's just I'm kind of high, so it's kind of hard to see them. This might be a good distance. You'll see what's happening up. See if one was in one of those lower layers. They're falling down. They're dying as they hit the ground for the most part. And... Um, Here's what all the layers look like, just to kind of show you guys. So here's our bottom layer where we started. You see your slimes, they are dying. Slime balls going all over the place. And then um, what we did was we gave a three block gap. And then the fourth block is our next floor. And we just torched it. And it repeated the process all the way up. The highest level that slimes will spawn is Y equals 39. So at least with the distances I use here where I started, Y37 was the highest I could go. I couldn't go higher. Um, every level, I just did this exact same thing. With one difference is there's no like floor to it right here. So like you don't want these blocks here because the slimes, as they fall down, they'll get stuck on it. So just get rid of that. Using the snow golems, as you can see, is a lot better than using iron golems because that's a lot of iron. If you're going all the way up, that's a whole lot of iron. So using the snow golems is actually rather easy because... Uh, it's easy to just go and get a bunch of snow, get some pumpkins, just do this once. And then I just lit up inside of each of those just to make sure no mobs like actually spawn in there with the snow golems. So it uh, looks like I missed that one. So yeah, um, uh, what I will do is uh, we're going to check this thing for rates. So 
I'm gonna have to leave it running for a timed like period of time to kind of see oh uh, one more thing that you guys want to do <laughs> another mistake I made I I lit everything down here and slabs are spawning down here so I had to go through and half slab it so they wouldn't spawn but this thing's been running for just a little bit and like literally I just cleared it out like right before I started recording and as you can see we already got about two stacks worth of um, oh man what is this Uh, look, and we still haven't even finished uh, actually getting everything yet, so I still got to go through and clear out some of these caves because we're probably going to have spawn, slime spawn down here. So I'm going to do that before I do my uh, test on the um, slimes, um, like the actual drops, drop rates. So stand by. This will be fixed, and then we'll run it for an hour, and uh, we'll see how it does. Okay, so before we go over the... Um, results here so you guys can see. I just wanted to let you actually take a quick look at uh, what we had worked on here to get everything I guess kind of sealed up so we were able to get our good spawn rates that we've been getting here. Um, this is a tricks for doing an x-ray. Now I'm doing it in creative mode so I can actually I cannot suffocate in the blocks but if I did not want to suffocate in the blocks. I could just pop these out and kind of scoot over here, be half in, half out, and it wouldn't get me. Um, but again, I don't have to worry about that problem right now. So when you have invisibility potion and night vision on together, and you hit your uh, button to change your view, you see how I can see through the uh, walls here. Um, and I'm just kind of showing you guys all the work that we did. You can see some of it here where we have slabbed all the floors and all of these areas that could potentially be slime chunks. Now, um, we didn't actually check to see which ones were or not. We just slapped everything below Y level 40 in our whole entire grid that we lit up above. And then anything above Y level 40, we went and just do torches down. And uh, it has worked spectacularly. So um, that is all the work that you need to do. Took a took us about four hours to do. And sometimes there was just the two of us working on it. And sometimes I had all four or all three of my uh, friends helping me out. So that has been great. And then as we look in here, you can see we have lots and lots of slime. Um, this is about six and a half hours worth of slime uh, from the AFK, which equals uh, just over uh, 1,300 an hour. So you can get 1,300 slime balls an hour from a setup just like the one that we have here. I've turned uh, the game mode back to peaceful, so nothing's gonna spawn right now. But yep, this little thing right here will get you about 1300 slime an hour if you condition the entire thing um, above and below ground. Uh, if you don't do the above ground part and or below ground part, and you just have one layer. Um, well, I didn't um, check the rates on that. Um, it, it's, it's more than enough for one person if you AFK it like one night like that's probably all you'll ever need so um, you can do that and yeah I think that's gonna be it so uh, with that I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody here I'm invisible right now so you cannot see me but uh, thank you guys for joining I do appreciate it uh, we're making a big push to get the channel to a thousand subscribers so um, if you enjoy my content and I hope you do um, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Um, I have a lot of good tutorials coming out all the time. I do some good videos on comparing Bedrock and the Java Edition. And of course, I am a member of the Truly Bedrock Survival Series as well, which is going to be going into Season 1 soon as of the recording of this video. So yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Thank you again for joining me, and you have a good one. Goodbye.